Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10 and support the channel at the same time. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and tonight Wizards of the Coast held their Guilds of Ravnica preview panel at PAX West. We saw a lot of cards from the new set. We're going to recap and review them all for you here tonight. Quickly before we get into it though, and there's a lot to talk about as you can see by the title screen here. Just a fast reminder, if you check out the description below, you'll find a few ways to help support our channel. Our Patreon page is down there. You're also going to find links to products on Amazon, including some pre-order opportunities already for Guilds of Ravnica. Also, Flipside Gaming still offering a promo code for our viewers. Hopefully you can save some cash while you support the channel. As always, though, thank you not only to the folks that look at those links, but to all the viewers. Y'all make the channel what it is. And let's get into these cards, because I'm pretty excited about a number of them. Now, a few hours before the panel started, this photo got leaked out, and it looks like the stores are already getting their promo cards. That's what you're looking at here. So the one in the bottom left-hand corner we have already seen. That's the Buy a Box promo. We did a video on it a few days ago, so we won't talk about that today. The one in the bottom right-hand corner, I can kind of almost make out most of it, but not enough for me to feel comfortable to talk about it. So I'm going to put that one on the back burner. We're not going to discuss it today. Eventually, it will be revealed, and we'll talk about it. Now, the good news is the other six cards were revealed during the PAX panel, so we have better photos of them. We'll talk about them all as we go through in color pie order today. We're going to begin with this one, which is also a Friday Night Magic promo. It's Conclave Tribunal. This costs a white and three. It's an enchantment uncommon with Convoke. Your creatures can help cast the spell. Each creature you tap while casting the spell pays for one or one mana of that creature's color. So yes, you can tap a white creature and get one white mana towards the casting cost of the spell. When this enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until this leaves the battlefield. So when you first look at this card, if you don't pay attention to the Convoke ability, it feels maybe a little slow for what it's doing. But when you take into account that this has Convoke, this card is actually pretty awesome. Now, control decks would like something like this, but it might not be great there. It might be a little slow in some control builds, especially all the builds that have Teferi now, that many times will just use that as the win condition. You don't have a lot of creatures, if any. So maybe it's not great there, but you know where this will be good? Any deck that's running a fair amount of creatures. <laughs> so White Weenie decks, Selesnya decks, Boros decks that might be going wide, aggro decks. This could really be very nice in a number of builds. It's a little early to know where the standard meta is going, considering we've seen so little of the set. But I think it's safe to say that there are going to be decks that will want to run something like this. Narco Amoeba, this is our first reprint of the evening. So you're probably pretty familiar with this card. I won't spend a lot of time on it. It's actually a critical card in a lot of dredge decks in Vintage, Legacy, and Modern. The question is, will there be some kind of quote-unquote dredge deck in Standard? Well, it feels like we're getting a lot of pieces just from what we've seen so far, so who knows? The new mechanic, Surveil, alone will help enable this card. There's also a lot of other cards from previous sets that are staying in Standard that have some interesting graveyard interactions. So I do think maybe finally some sort of reanimation or Graveyard Matters deck could become a thing with this set. Maybe this is a part of it. Maybe it's not. It's an interesting reprint, though. Strange that they made it a rare. I feel like it was fine at Uncommon, even for a limited, although we haven't seen the whole set yet. So who knows? Maybe it would break this limited. But I thought it was strange that it was rare. Quasi-duplicate. Two blue and one. It's a sorcery rare. Create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. This has Jumpstart. You may cast this card from your graveyard by discarding a card in addition to paying its other costs, then exile this card. So I don't really see this as a standard card. Typically, the copy of creature cards can be a little too situational for standard. Like if you just had a board sweep happen and you draw this, it's not going to feel real good. Furthermore, this one's narrow because it's only a copy of target creature you control. But where this could be fun is definitely commander. Like I think about things like BioVisionary, for example. And there's probably some really cool combos you can do with this overall. So yeah, I think it's cool there. Don't know if this is a standard card for me. It will be good and limited, though, too. All right, this next one is another Friday Night Magic promo. It's Sinister Sabotage. This costs two blue and one. It's an instant uncommon counter target spell, and you get to surveil one. And that means look at the top card of your library, and you may put that card into your graveyard. So very similar to Scry. Instead of choosing top or bottom of deck, you choose top of deck or your graveyard. So this plays into a lot of the graveyard mechanics that appear to be going on here. So a counter spell for three isn't anything thrilling. Sometimes it is playable if you don't have a lot of other options in the current standard. I think we have enough options, even after rotation, that I don't know if I'm going to be crazy about playing something like this. But if the surveil is good enough, and there's a deck that cares enough about that, 
it could see some standard play in that situation. So we'll have to kind of wait and see again if that will become a thing in standard and how good it's going to be. Necrotic Wound. Yuck, that's going to be the league promo though. It costs one black. It's an instant uncommon with undergrowth. Target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. If that creature would die this turn, exile it instead. This is pretty good. Here's what I like about it. Instant speed, just one to cast. That can be a really strong removal spell. Here's the drawback, though. Early on in the game, it doesn't do much. You might not be able to use this to knock out your opponent's land or elf, and that sometimes can be critical in the early turns. Also, you have to have the right deck behind it, right? Another card that's not going to be great in a control build, even though control builds would love this, they need the creatures to fuel it. So you need to have a deck where this is going to make sense. Will there be builds in the standard where it will make sense? I think there will be. Again, it just feels like they're giving us a lot of tools to play around with the graveyard. And even just some regular aggro decks and stuff, you're going to have enough things die where this will matter within a few turns, and it will be worth having in your deck. So I do think the C standard play... Is this better than like a Fatal Push when it comes to like Modern or something like that? I'm not completely sold there. There might be some decks that might like this because of their build. But for me, I don't see it replacing things like Fatal Push and some of those other formats. Good and standard though. I think this will see a fair amount of play. And this could be really good for you in Limited for sure too as a strong, uncommon removal spell. You'd be lucky to pick up a couple of these in a draft if everything went your way. Legion War Boss. This is a red and two goblin soldier rare 2-2 two -two with mentor. Whenever this creature attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on target attacking creature with lesser power. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a 1-1 one -one red goblin creature token. That token gains haste until end of turn and attacks this combat if able. So the token doesn't go away, but it has to attack. So there's many times it might just be attacking into a larger creature considering it's a 1-1. One -one. So maybe you don't actually get a whole lot of use out of it. But I like the idea behind this card, and as long as I can maybe do some things with goblins or with small creatures, this maybe could be part of a Boros Aggressive Go Wide deck if that is good enough to get there in standard, or if they give us enough tools to build a goblin deck, that could be super sweet, right? I mean, there's already some great goblins that will still be in standard, Chain Whirler, for example. But I do think in a vacuum, this card feels a little weak. It just needs other cards to make it great. We just don't know if those cards are going to be there yet, basically. When we talk about outside of standard, I don't really think we'll do much there. I just think Goblin Rabble Master is still a better card. Here's another Friday Night Magic promo. It's Thought Erasure. This is going to cost a blue and black sorcery uncommon. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it. That player discards that card. Surveil one. First off, I'll say this isn't Thought Seize, but I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't know if we need Thought Seize in standard. This is a two casting cost card, but it is two different colors. You have to think of this more of as a turn three or turn four play. And the longer the game goes where you don't play this, it just becomes less and less impressive. With that being said, though, we have a gold set entering standard. I have a feeling that it won't be overly difficult to cast some of these multicolor cards quickly. If that's the case, and I can get this out sometimes on turn two or turn three, it does feel like it could be a pretty decent card. The information's really important. Making them discard the non-land card of your choice could be great for you. Although, if there's a lot of decks that are working with the graveyard, this card probably gets a little bit worse. And this is target opponent, so you can't play it on yourself, unfortunately. So that could be something that holds this card back. We'll have to see. The Surveil, though, is something that is a plus. Maybe that will help it along as well. So overall, I think there's enough upside here that this does see play in standard in a deck somewhere. Okay, here is the Planeswalker. It's Raal Is It Viceroy. A red, a blue, and three. Legendary Planeswalker Raul, Mythic, five loyalty, plus one. Look at the top two cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Minus three, this will deal damage to target creature equal to the total number of instant and sorcery cards you own in exile and in your graveyard. Minus eight, you get an emblem with whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell. This emblem deals four damage to any target and you draw two cards. Okay, so five casting costs, five loyalty. That actually feels pretty good, even for standard. The plus one's great. Look at the top two cards. You get to take one of them. It's a little card draw, a little card selection. The other card goes to the graveyard, which is going to be fantastic with this set, I think, especially with Jumpstart and these colors. And then the minus three. It's a little conditional. However, I would prefer maybe if it was this conditional, it was only like a minus two or something like that. But in the right deck, I don't think this is the end of the world. If this is in some sort of is it spell jumpstart deck, then yeah, the minus three will still be fine for you. 
The minus eight is good. It won't take too many turns to get there. I mean, you don't want to assess a Planeswalker on their ultimate because it's very difficult to get there typically, but it's a good one if you do get there. It could help you win the game. Again, you do have to cast instants and sorcery, so you do have to have the right deck, and maybe that is a jumpstart deck. So, with all that being said, does this C standard play? If jumpstart's good enough, yeah, but even if it's not, I mean, we have things like lightning strike, shock that are already in the format. There could be some sort of is it control build or something like that down the road or Jeskai control build perhaps that might want to run something like this. I think the potential's here for the card. Underrealm Lich. This costs a green, a black, and three. Zombie Elf Shaman, Mythic for three. If you would draw a card, instead look at the top three cards of your library, then put one into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Pay four life and this gains indestructible till the end of turn. Tap it. Kind of like the new regeneration, I guess. So... I think this is a little expensive and maybe a little clunky for standard, especially with that three toughness. Granted, it can protect itself with that regeneration-like ability. However, you do lose four life in the transaction. So, I don't know. Could it see standard play if a deck was maybe all in on graveyard shenanigans, perhaps? But I'm not sold on that quite yet. I do think this one's a little shaky for me. But where I do like this is definitely Commander. I think there's some cool interactions one that comes to mind is the Gitrog monster. You have to be careful not to deck yourself there, but maybe if you had an Eldrazi Titan or something like that, the deck could be fine. So those type of interactions I think could be fun and interesting to work your way through your deck fast in that particular example. But I do think there's a number of things you could do with this in Commander, actually. Okay, this next one is the Store Championship promo card. It's a Mara Soul of the Accord. White, green, legendary creature, elf cleric, rare, 2-2. Two, two. Whenever this becomes tapped, create a 1-1 white soldier creature token with lifelink. So when you first look at this one, okay, it costs 2 for a 2-2. Two, two. Interesting upside. I don't know if I can attack with this all that often, though. It's only a 2-2, two, two, so what kind of benefit will I get? Well, maybe I can find another way to tap it. Well, then you might remember that a little thing called Convoke is in this set. If you can simply just put her on the battlefield for 2 and then use her to either get green or white mana throughout the game, and while you're doing that, creating 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens with lifelink, that actually could be pretty sweet. That alone makes me feel like maybe there is some sort of Selesnia go-wide convoke deck or something that really could happen in standard, because that really seems like a sweet interaction, and it is very affordable for just two mana, and it leads to just bigger plays down the road, because all of those 1-1 one, one tokens now can also be tapped for convoke spells. Could be interesting if we have the right spells and the right tools in this set. We'll have to wait and see, but at least this is the beginning of something. Also in Commander, imagine throwing this into your Slesnia token deck. Could be really good there too. Boros Challenger. This one's going to be the open house promo. This costs a red and white. It's a human soldier on common 2-3 with Mentor. Pay a white, a red, and two, and it will get plus one, plus one to the end of turn. The mana sink's a little expensive, but it plays well with Mentor, so I think that's kind of interesting. It only costs 2, and it's a 2-3, even though it is two different colors. Again, hopefully that won't be too big of an issue within this set. This feels a little more like a limited card for me, though. Unless the Boros deck in Standard can be really solid and the Mentor ability is pushed a lot, then perhaps this crosses over into Standard, but I think for the most part, this is just going to be a really solid limited card. A very high pick, though, in many drafts. All right, well, you saw this on the title card, but yes, the Shocklands are here. The ones that correspond with the guilds in this particular set are being reprinted. Happy to see that. I really did think they were going to be there. I know sometimes you can't count on wizards to do what you think they're going to do, but I just don't feel like these are overpowered in standard. As long as Fetchlands aren't there, these aren't all that bad. And these are going to help you cast your multicolor things a little quicker, which is going to be good considering we're going to be living in Ravnica for a while now. So Overgrown Tomb is here, Sacred Foundry is here, Steam Vents, Temple Garden, and Watery Grave. All great cards, all see play outside of Standard as well, and they have some pretty nice price tags attached to them, so these are very welcome reprints. Okay, speaking of nice price tags, I don't even know how to explain this, because Wizards didn't really give us a lot of information on it. They're coming out with an article on Tuesday with more info. So I'm just going to tell you what I know so far. I'm going to try not to prejudge too much because we just don't know all the details yet. But this is making me a little nervous. All right. So they said they're going to bring back masterpieces. Eight different Planeswalkers with full art. You're going to see them in just a few moments. They look really cool. At least seven of the eight have been revealed so far. 
And basically, they're borderless cards, much like some of the cards we saw last year in the unset. They look awesome. However, it doesn't appear, at least it doesn't appear at this time, that you're going to be able to find these in regular booster packs like you did with the old masterpieces. Unfortunately, it appears that you're going to have to buy a specialty product to get these. It feels like a cross between a booster box and a from the vault, is what it sounds like anyway at this point. So, this is going to be available for sale on the Hasbro store online. $249.99 is the retail price. You're going to get 16 booster packs of Guilds of Ravnica and 8 Planeswalker booster packs. Now, I don't know what that means exactly. 8 Planeswalker booster packs, maybe they're just regular booster packs, but when you open it up, one of those 8 Planeswalkers are in there, and I'm hoping that they would guarantee you would get all 8 in a box. And the idea is then you could draft with friends or something and still open these planeswalkers and play with them and it would be crazy or something. It's a cool idea, but wow, that price point, $250, like that's something I'm never going to buy. They look really cool, but I'm just concerned that if there's no other way to get them, wow, this is really a big investment for these type of cards. So without any further ado, let's look at the cards and then I'll give you my last few thoughts on them. Unfortunately, they didn't give us pictures like we saw of some of the other cards, but luckily there were some folks taking photos at the PAX panel. We're going to start off with Elspeth Knight Errants is the first one. There's eight altogether. We actually see seven of them, and I'll explain why in just a second, but the full art border, I mean, looks amazing. These look incredible, but again, I'm worried about the price point here. Liliana the Last Hope. Wow, with that purple background, that is super striking. Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, of course, one of the more popular modern-day Planeswalkers. Tezzeret, Agent of Bolas is there. Raul, is it Viceroy? So, Raul's there, of course, he's in the regular set as well, we just saw. The eighth one we didn't see is Vraska from the new set, and they haven't revealed her yet, so they didn't show her card, unfortunately, but we did get to see the others. Duretti, Ingenious Iconoclast. Nicol Bolas, Planeswalker is the final one that we've seen. So that's what we know so far. If it's true in the end that we can only get this by buying a $250 product, I'm not real big on that at all. But I'm going to wait and reserve my judgment until Tuesday and the whole article with all the information comes out. And we'll do a video. We'll talk about it at that point and see where we stand. Hopefully I'm wrong about that and that's not the case. We'll see. All right. With that being said, that's what we know from the PAX panel. Don't want to leave it on a downer with that big question mark hanging in the air about those planeswalkers. But other than that, though, everything was really cool. I was happy to see the shock lands. The new cards we saw actually look pretty good. I like the power level behind them. I'm excited about Ravnica as a set, not only for limited, but for what it's going to be doing for standard. So there's a lot more to see. We don't know a lot about the set yet. Can't wait to learn as we go forward over the next few weeks. Until next time, though, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.